as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet The Challenge of the Yukon. Be able to signal the way Sergeant Preston does. Yes, if you hurry, you can get an official two-tone Sergeant Preston mounted police whistle for your very own. A 14-carat gold-plated copy of Sergeant Preston's own whistle. Offered by the ready-to-serve breakfast cereal shot from guns, Quaker puffed rice, and Quaker puffed wheat. Don't miss out. Get details of this thrilling offer in just a few minutes. Van Topton smiled to himself as he and his wife, Betty, stood watching while their little daughter, Gloria, opened a large box containing a birthday present. Oh, golly, I'm so excited. Is it a big doll? Or maybe a wagon? (laughs) Stop trying to guess. Open it. All right. Mama. Mama, look. A real live puppy. Can I... I mean, may I lift him up, Daddy? Oh, sure, he's your pup. Go ahead. Come on, puppy. Oh, isn't he cute? Oh, look, Mama, he's all white with just one black ear. Oh, Daddy, he's wonderful. <laughs> Honest. I'm glad you like him, Glow. It's up to you to take care of him. Remember that. Well, I have a feeling that Mother will have a bit of extra caring to do. Isn't that the puppy Mrs. Rector had in Tom Van? Mm-hmm. She, uh, she was willing to sell him to me, so I grabbed at the chance, knowing how pleased Glow would be. Ow, you naughty puppy. Let go of my sleeve. Oh, <laughs> stop that. <laughs> I'm going to go in my room and play with you. Uh, don't you mind, you naughty puppy. Then you know very well how the rectors have complained about that puppy since they got him a month ago. Mrs. Rector tells me he chews anything and everything in the place. <laughs> Oh, well, all puffs do that. They have to be trained, that's all. From what Mrs. Rector told me, I'm afraid it's going to take a lot of training, Van. If he's as destructive as she says he is, we just won't be able to keep him. Now, don't be unreasonable, honey. You saw how excited Glow was over that pup. I've already made up my mind that if that puppy persists in chewing everything in sight, we'll get rid of him. And that's that. Oh, heck, what's the use? I'm going back to town for a while. See you later. During the next few days, Van Topton spent more time than usual in the cafe each evening, after finishing his work as clerk at the express office. One evening, Sergeant Preston entered with his dog, Yukon King, and approached Van's table. Well, hello, Sergeant. Hello, Hi, Warren. Sergeant. How are you? Hello, Van. Hi, Sergeant. Why don't you sit down? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Lie down, King. Van, I've noticed you've been visiting this cafe for the past few evenings instead of going on home as you used to do. Anything wrong at home? <laughs> oh, nothing too serious, Sergeant. A few days ago, I took a puppy home to Gloria. Got it from the rectors. Oh, yes, I remember the pup they had. I understand he practically chewed the foundation out from under the cabin. <laughs> That's a <the> trouble. <laughs> well, you know, Betty and I have really had a difference between us. But that pup sure caused one. I named him Contention because of the arguments he's caused at home in the past few days. Well, that's quite a name for that pup. He still has the chewing habit, I suppose. Oh, he sure has. But he's given me one more week to get rid of him. But Gloria's crazy about the darn pup, and frankly, I, I sort of like him myself. A bit of firm training ought to break him of that habit. Sure, that's what I tell Betty. But you know how wives are. She claims Glo- Gloria and I have fun with Contention, 
while she has the work of trying to train him and break him of his bad habits. Well, frankly, I don't know how wives are, Van, but I do know about dogs. If you and Gloria ignore his chewing habit, Betty's training won't have much effect. I suppose you're right. But say, Sergeant, isn't that the gold whistle I've been hearing about? Oh, yes. Want to look it over? Say, that is something. Oh, it has your name on it, too. That's right. Oh, it's made of gold. It's a replica of the official mounted police whistle. The constable told me about it. <laughs> well, Van, I have to move along. See you again soon. Give my regards to Betty and Gloria. I'll do that, Sergeant. So long. Good night, Van. Let's go, King. <laughs> Meantime, at a remote table at the back of the cafe, two men had watched Van and Sergeant Preston as they talked. After Preston and King went out, one of the men spoke. Hey, Buck, I've seen that Mountie before up in Dawson City. What, what he's doing in Selkirk? Mm, maybe he's just passing through on patrol. They got a regular constable here, Sam. Wish we could have heard what they was talking about. Funny that express fellow's been hanging around town lately at night. That can't mean anything. He has no way of knowing we figure on robbing the express office. Yeah, but I still don't get it. It's better this way. We know just where he is. The first night that snow falls, we'll pull the job. Why do you want to wait till it's snowing, Buck? The snow will cover our tracks so we can't be trailed. Oh, I never thought of that. That's why I have to do all the planning. You just don't think. Oh, no, Buck. Uh, come on, let's get out of here. I'll go to the boarding house and I'll tell you all about my plan. All right. Late the next afternoon, snow began to fall. Sam and Buck waited in the cafe until they saw Van Topton enter after he had closed the express office. The two crooks sat for a while and then leisurely left the cafe. Well, this is it, Sam. We'll get our dog team hitched and leave it behind the boarding house. Then we'll bust into the express office to the back way and clean out the safe. Then what? We can run along the back way to where we leave the dog sled. The express office and the boarding house are on the same side of the street. Yeah, yeah, I know. We'll head south and take the branch trail to Bivy Creek. I know a place there where we can hold up for a while. The fallen snow will cover any tracks we leave, so we'll have nothing to worry about. Come on, let's get a move on. A short time after the two crooks had left the cafe, Van got up from his table and started for the door. You're leaving earlier than usual, aren't you, Van? Oh, I'm coming back. I forgot some papers I want to take home and work on tonight, so I have to go back to the office. Still having trouble with that puppy you got from the rectors? Yeah, the darn little mutt chews up everything he can get. But I don't want to give him up if I can help him. Well, from what I heard you telling the sergeant last night, you don't have much choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Penny's being stubborn about it, I admit. But I'm hoping she'll get to like contention and let him stay. Contention? That's a mighty big name for a pup. Well, I hope things work out for you, Van. I'll see you later. Yeah, I'll be back soon. Inside the express office, Buck was working on the safe while Sam stood guard near the front. <laughs> It won't take long to get this old safe open. It's open. Hold it, Buck, and put out the candle. Somebody's coming. Candle's out. She just come up on the porch. I must be the express clerk. Get to the side of the door, quick. Hold it, you. <laughs> that got him. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know what hit him. Help me carry him over behind the counter. All right. Put him down here. Yeah. I got his keys. Now we'll get the stuff in the safe, and then we'll go out and lock him in. Nobody can fail us in this snowstorm. Let's get going. After knocking out Van, the two crooks cleaned out the safe. And then locking the front door as they went out, they walked to the back and started away with their dog team. They headed down the south trail for a couple of miles before Sam called a halt. Hey, Buck. Stop a minute. Oh, follow you, Huskies. Oh. What's the matter, Sam? We forgot to bring any supplies. We can't take a chance of being without food if we have to hole up because of the storm. Well, gone it. Why didn't you think of that sooner? We can't go back to town now. Maybe not, but we'll be in a fix if we don't get supplies someplace. Uh, we'll stop at the first cabin we come to and make them give us some supplies. If we do that, they'll get word to the constable in town that we're headed this way. Uh, yeah, that's right. Well, we can offer to buy supplies then and pay for what we get. That ought to keep them from being suspicious. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Let's get going. I'm getting cold. All right. Mush you, Huskies! Mush! A few minutes later, Betty Topton answered a knock at the door. Good evening, ma'am. 
come in out of the snow. Well, thank you. We want to buy some supplies from you. All you can let us have. Yeah, we need plenty. I have some cash here in my wallet. I'll get... <laughs> Drop my bandana. <laughs> hey, let go of that. Let go. Mister, don't kick my puppy. He's just playing. He ran off with my bandana. I got it. We haven't all day. Uh, we want supplies. Oh, I'm sorry, but I have very little here. You aren't far from town, though. You can get all you want there. Lady, we're not going to town. No, we just came Shut from up, the... Sam. The puppy went under the bed in the other room, and I can't get him to come out. Forget the pup. Who's in the other room? Nobody. Daddy's in town. He works at the express office. Oh, he does, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> Lady, this gun says you'll give us what supplies you have right now. Get busy and pack them up. we got to get out of here. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. This is the last week. Yes, this week is your last chance on this program to hear how to get a 14-carat gold-plated copy of Sergeant Preston's famous mounted police whistle. So hurry, get this official two-toned police whistle offered only by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the swell-tasting king-size cereals shot from guns. You get with this terrific whistle a 12-inch gold-colored braided nylon cord. To hang from your buttonhole or belt. It's a beauty of a whistle, plated with gleaming 14-karat gold. It's a heavy whistle. You can feel the weight and quality of the heavy-duty metal. It's a big whistle, actually over three and a half inches long. And listen to its two-tone sound that shows it's an official police whistle. <coughs> Think of the signaling you can do with this Sergeant Preston whistle. Perfect for dark night. Handy in any emergency. Just what you need for training and calling your dog. Don't forget, this police whistle is not for sale in any store. To get it, buy a package of Quaker Puffed Rice or Quaker Puffed Wheat. The famous breakfast cereals shot from guns. Actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. Delicious and tender as nuts in November. Then send the box top with only 35 cents. That's 35 cents and your name and address to Yukon. Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. You'll get a money-back guarantee with your swell 14-karat gold-plated Sergeant Preston mounted police whistle. Yes, hold it in your hand. Blow it just once. <coughs> and if it isn't better, far better, than any other whistle you've ever seen, you may return it and get every cent of your money back, plus postage. So hurry, hurry, hurry. This is the last week of this radio offer. Send 35 cents and a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice... To Yukon, Y-U-K-O-N, Yukon, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue. Learning that Betty and her little girl were alone in the cabin, Buck pulled a gun and ordered Betty to pack up what supplies she had available. For a moment, Betty was startled. And then she spoke spiritedly. I won't give you any of our supplies. Sam, while I keep her covered, see what supplies you can find. All right. Just a minute. You keep away from that cupboard. Shut up and sit down with her. Oh. How dare you push me like that? Keep quiet and maybe you won't get hurt. Mama, I, I'm scared. Come here, Gloria. Sit on Mama's lap. I found the Don't gun, let sir. them hurt us. Be quiet, dear. Everything will be all right. If you think I won't use this gun, you're mistaken. So you better get wise and both of you keep quiet. Come on, hurry up, Sam. I'm putting the stuff in this sack here. There. I got about all of it. Look, Buck, what are we going to do about the woman? You want me to tie her up bother, and Don't just... bother, don't bother. She's alone and two miles from town. She has no way of getting there except on foot, and she couldn't do that in a storm. <laughs> By morning, we'll be plenty far from here and without leaving any trail behind us. Come on, let's go. About an hour after the robbery, Sergeant Preston entered the cafe and looked around for Van Topton. Oh, hello, Jake. Topton around? Nope, he was here about an hour or so ago. Said he was going back to the office for a few minutes to pick up some papers, and he was coming back. Funny it's taking him so long. Well, maybe he decided to do some work at the office. I'll go over there and see if he's working. Well, his dog team's still out back, so I know he didn't go home. Oh, I see. Well, thanks for the information, Jake. I'll go to the express office. Come along, King. <laughs> A few minutes later, Sergeant Preston and King approached the front of the express office. 
Oh, it's strange. There isn't any light in the office, King. I'll try the door. It's locked. Whatever Van is, he didn't go home. His dog team's still behind the cafe. What's the matter, King? Van. Van, are you in there? Only one thing to do, fella. I'll light the lamp. What's happened, Van? Uh, my head can't stand too dizzy. Someone jumped me in the dark. Oh, a nasty blow on the back of your head. Uh, safe. See if this. I'll is... find out. Safe's open and empty. I'll bandage your head, Van, and then I'll get the constable. We'll take you home on your own sled, and then we'll try to get a line on these crooks. Some time later, with Preston using his own dog team and the constable driving vans, they arrived at Van's cabin. Van, I'm so glad you're home. And I'm more than glad to see the sergeant and the constable with you. Something wrong, Betty? Yes, sergeant. I'll tell you what happened. Briefly, Betty told about the two men who had taken supplies. When she finished, Preston spoke. Constable, they could have been the ones who robbed the express office. Robbed the express office? Van, that bandage. I didn't notice it with your parka hood on. I'm all right now, honey. Do they have any idea that you're Van's wife, Betty? Yes. Gloria told them her daddy worked at the express office. They laughed and said they wouldn't have to tie me, that I couldn't get to town in a storm on foot, and that by morning they'd be far away in a hideout. And they must have been the ones who robbed the safe. <laughs> huh? Puppy must be under the couch. King's looking under there. He is. He's been chewing on something he found on the floor. I want to see that, bud. Hip up. Come on, fella. Now, pull him out. Well, what's that you have there? Oh, a bandana. Well, that's the one contention took from one of the crooks. Fine. Drop it, fella. But why do you want that, Sergeant? Buddy, your pup's found something that may lead us to those crooks. King can get the scent from this and should be able to pick up their trail in spite of the falling snow. Let's go, Constable. There's no time to lose. Come on, King. Once outside Van's cabin, the great dog was able to pick up the scent through the light, fluffy snow on the trail. And with King leading the way, Preston and the Constable followed with the dog team along the trail left by the two crooks. On, King! On, you husky! This branch trail leads to Beaver Creek, Sergeant. I know. We're almost there. But they may have pushed on toward Whitehorse. They'll stop sometime to eat and rest. That's right. That's what I'm counting on. Storm stops, so the going's much easier. I think I see a glimmer of light ahead. Must be a cabin. We'll stop here. Well, King. Oh, oh, no. Wait here, Constable. I'll go with King and see if the trail leads to that cabin. They might hear the dogs if we go on with the team. That's right. What if they are in that cabin? I'll try to get the drop on them. If I run into trouble, I'll blow two blasts on my whistle. In that case, lie flat on the sled and start the team toward the cabin. All right, Sergeant. If one of them happens to be watching, he won't see you until you're close enough to help. Now wait for your signal and lie flat on the sled. Good. Let's go, King. Find them, fella. Inside the cabin, the two crooks pushed their chairs back from the table and stood up. Buck yawned and spoke. We might as well grab a couple hours sleep on the bunks over there, Sam. I'll blow out the lamp. If the snow stops, we can leave here when we wake up and head for Whitehorse. Yeah, I'll look out the window and see. It has stopped snowing, Sam. That means we... Hey, I see a man outlined against the snow. He's heading this way. Let me see. Where? There he is. See? Yeah. He can't see us here in the window with the light out. What are we going to do, Buck? Whoever he is, we'll let him in. We'll get behind the door when he enters. Grab your gun and come on. Yeah. Outside, Sergeant Preston and King moved cautiously toward the darkened cabin. King moved to the door, sniffing. And then, looking at Preston, the dog whined. Quiet, King. Just inside the door, Buck and Sam had heard the dog. Buck spoke hurriedly in a whisper. Dog. Must be Preston, that mutt. Quick, get up on the rafters. Stand on a chair. All right. He bust in in a minute. <laughs> All right, now wait a minute. <laughs> Ah, that mutt can't reach us. The two men straddled the rafters above and waited tensely. A minute went by, and then the door was eased open, and Preston and King entered. Hmm, doesn't seem to be... Reach, Manny, and drop your gun. (laughs) (laughs) That mutt can't reach us up here. Drop your gun, I said. All right. Now, put the dog outside. For a moment, Sergeant Preston stood outlined in the glow of the fireplace, and then he spoke to King. All right, King. Outside, boy. 
on down, Sam. Close the door while I keep him covered. All right. Now I got him covered, Buck. Good. I'll come down. <coughs> hey, what do we do about that dog? We shoot him before we leave. Right now, we don't want to, any shots to attract attention. We got to figure what to do with this money right away, Sam. I'll light the lamp again. I got an idea so we won't be trailed for murder. We'll tie them out and put him on the sled. And along the trail, we'll knock him out, untie him, and dump him in a ravine. He'll freeze to death, and no one will know what happened. It's a good idea, but one of us has to ride the sled. Him along, there won't be room. I figure he must have brought along a sled and team, Buck. He couldn't catch up with us if he hadn't. Yeah, that's right. What about it, Monty? You know you must have followed with a dog sled. Where is it? I left my sled and dog team up the trail. Came the rest of the way on foot, hoping to take you by surprise. <laughs> yeah, we outsmarted you this time. I reckon he must have come alone, Buck. Well, we'll use his dog sled along with us. One of us will have to go after it before we can take Preston out. But we've got to kill that big mutt waiting outside first. We'll just have to take a chance that nobody will be around to hear the Hold shot. on a minute. Hold on. Tie me up and leave me here instead of taking me with you. Nothing doing. Well, then, if you let me call the dog in, I'll promise you he won't attack. You can keep me covered while I tie him. If you do that, I'll blow two blasts on this whistle of mine, and my dog team will come here with their own accord. Well, uh, what about it, Buck? <laughs> yeah, we don't have to agree, but take that whistle from him, Sam, and open the back window a bit, and you blow two blasts on it. Maybe the team will come. All right. Go ahead, blow the whistle. Hey, seems like the team really answered that whistle. Hey, Thunder, the team is coming, like he said. They'll stop when they see the other dog outside, I guess. Get some cord and tie Preston good and tight, Sam. Keep them covered. I'll tie them, all right. Meantime, when he heard the two blasts made by Preston's cold whistle, the constable laid flat on the sled and then urged the team out. Uh, on your huskies. When they approached the cabin, King ran toward the team, which stopped out front. The constable could see a figure at the window, so he lay quietly out of sight on the sled. The figure at the window turned away, so the constable quickly got up and moved to the side of the cabin. He peered inside, taking in the situation. Then he moved around to the door. Patting King on the head, he spoke in a low tone. Quiet, fella. I'll go inside. You ready to get him, King? Inside, Sam had tied Preston while Buck stood near, holding a gun. And then Buck went to the window and watched as the dog team pulled to a stop out front. He could see only the dim outline of the sled, but he was satisfied that no one had driven the team to the cabin. He turned away, saying, mm, Sure a smart dog team. I was watching out the window to make sure nobody was driving the dog team here. And now we load up and get ready to finish off that mud out there and... Drop that gun! Hey, what the... Well, get you... Oh! Sam, who had just finished tying Preston's Sam. hand behind his back, grabbed for his gun, oh, and using it. Preston as a shield. Oh, get that shoot, yeah. Buck. You don't dare shoot at me. Even as Sam spoke, the great dog king moved like a gray streak along the wall until he was behind Sam. And then he sprang as Sam aimed at the constable. Oh, get him off. Help. I have a gun. Oh, king, down for the... Watch him, boy. I've got the cords. Thanks. All right, let's have that whistle. Here it is. Ah, uh, when you blew that whistle, it brought the constable along with the team. Well, you told me to blow it, so stop beefing. What's more, you must have been blind not to see him coming. I could swear he wasn't with him. I still can't figure how he got here without me seeing him. Click that over in jail. Oh. The gold's on the table, constable. We'll stop at man's cabin on the way back. Let's get going. Later, at the Topton cabin, the two crooks were identified by Betty as the men who had stolen supplies. With a twinkle in his eye, Preston looked at Van Topton and then spoke to Betty. Betty, you were fortunate to have that puppy contention here. If he hadn't taken the bandana from one of those crooks and run off with it, we might not have been able to pick up their trail. Contention's bad habit of grabbing and chewing things has put him in bad around here, Sergeant. I've decided to give him up to please Betty. I'll get Glow another pup. Van Topton! How can you stand there and say such a thing about poor little contention... After he practically got back your stolen gold for you. Sometimes I think you men don't have any feelings at all. But, Betty, I... Here, contention. Give me a boy. Come on, Buffy. That's a good boy. You're staying right here with us as long as you live, contention. And Gloria's daddy will just have to make up his mind to that. <laughs> That's all right with me, Betty. If you say so, contention stays. <laughs> Even King agrees. 
Well, I'm glad Contention earned himself such a fine home. Let's get these cooks to town, Constable. This case is closed. In just a moment, we'll give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Whistling in the dark. Whatever you do, don't miss your big chance on this program to get a Sergeant Preston mounted police whistle. This is the very last week of this sensational radio offer. Made by swell-tasting, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. You've never seen anything like this whistle. Not even your own neighborhood policeman's whistle can hold a candle to it. That's because it's a genuine copy of Sergeant Preston's own whistle. When you hold this big, heavy, three-and-one-half-inch whistle in your hand, when you see its gleaming 14-carat gold-plated finish... You know it's the real McCoy. Remember, you get with it a 12-inch gold-colored braided nylon cord. And for both whistle and cord, you send only 35 cents with your name and address and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat, the famous cereal shot from guns. Send to Yukon, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. And what a thrill you'll get every time you blow this official Sergeant Preston mounted police whistle. Hurry, send your 35 cents, just 35 cents, and one box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice to Yukon. Y-U-K-O-N, Yukon, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. Send right away. Young Corey Lane slammed the door of Matt Deacon's cabin and started trudging down the dark main street toward the center of town. His head bowed against the storm. He had walked less than 50 yards when he heard his name called. Corey! What? He turned. Matt was standing in the lighted doorway. Oh. At that instant, a shot rang out. Matt clutched at the air and then slumped to the ground. Matt. Shot. Who did it? Who killed him? Oh, it doesn't matter. The whole world will think I did it. I'm going to be accused of murder. Don't miss this exciting adventure, Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker oats. Quaker and mother's oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.